so uh, hello everyone uh, i am bhupesh kumar singh uh, working as a senior test engineer under accessibility solutions group asg so in today's session uh, i will give you a practical demonstration of accessibility uh, testing on how to test the websites what part of the web content needs to be considered under accessibility testing and what approach do we follow for different types of elements while uh, testing them so uh, i'm sharing my screen to show you a couple of slides that i have made okay so i hope my screen is visible now okay. yes i can see okay so uh, the first slide as it says what is accessibility and what are its benefits so accessibility is the practice of making your web the mobile applications and the digital documents usable and accessible to as many people as possible including people with disabilities so making accessible applications is a part of the law in many countries and the benefits of accessibility includes uh, improved search engine optimization the uh, search engine indexing improves and if you are using uh, html uh, language to develop the websites then uh, the your search engine uh, indexing Im improves and uh, it it uh, it surely improves the online experience of uh, many people around the world so as per the statistics there are around over 1 billion people with disabilities so if you take into consideration the accessibility from the start itself so apart from the improvement of the seo it enhances your enhances your brand and it increases the market reach and also it minimizes the legal risk of lawsuits that you have that you must might have heard that is happening across the us so and lastly accessibility is not a nice to have feature nor is it a checklist that needs to be ticked off and uh, coming to our next slide uh, it's all about ableism H how to use the right word i mean which right words do you have to use while referring to the disability community uh, use bias free language for disability always use the words like dis disabled person you can use the word word disabled it's not a bad word at all and you can also uh, refer to the disabled disabled person via people first language or person first language like people with disability or you can refer to them as person with a disability disabled person people with intellectual disabilities these are perfectly fine if you are referring to a disabled person or, or a disabled community uh, don't use the following words like differently abled people with special needs physically challenged mentally challenged mentally retarded avoid using these phrases when you are referring to the disabled uh, community uh, coming to our next slide uh, for accessibility you know if you are trying if you are whether you are developing an application uh, taking into consideration accessibility from the start itself or you are testing the accessibility of the website you are testing whether it conforms to wcag success criteria or not the types of disability you have to know what types of disabilities uh, uh, you, you, I mean, uh, you should have a knowledge about the types of disabilities, because when you are when you encounter any issue, then you must know that issue is a barrier to which type of disability. So disabilities can be temporary. In by temporary, I mean, for example, uh, if a, if a person uh, uh, is met with an accident, and he or she has their uh, right hand fractured. 
so they won't be able to use the right hand uh, for a couple of months unless and until they get totally healed so for that time period no they be, they have become disabled due to their inability to use the mouse using the right hand so ha so they have to use keyboard keyboard device in order to operate the website so these are the temporary disabilities uh, the injuries and all the other one is the permanent disability the permanent disabilities means uh, these are lifelong disabilities like blindness color blindness low vision deaf hard of hearing uh, cognitive disabilities reading disabilities learning disabilities these are permanent ones and age related uh, the human population uh, as the time passes we all age so during our old age uh, period uh, our intellectual disabilities diminish with time our hands start shaking the fine motor control no they all diminish with age so we won't be able to use the mouse with precise controls so we have to rely on keyboard as keyboard keys no they don't uh, uh, require fine precision controls and and with aging our eyesight also get weak so these are the age related disabilities temporary permanent and age related and coming to the visual and disabilities can be further categorized into visual visual hearing motor mobility and cognitive and there are many more for visual we can say for visual disabilities means visually impaired people those are blind low vision color blind users these come under the visual uh, disability category for hearing we say deaf or hard of hearing for motor disabilities they lack fine motor abilities precision control is lacking difficulty in using mouse so the motor disabilities people with motor disabilities they have difficulty in operating a mouse so they either uh, switch to keyboard keyboard input device or speech input you or speech recognition software like dragon so for example if there is a button called submit so with the dragon speech recognition software they will uh, make use of the speech based commands like click submit so as soon as the user says click submit the dragon software will activate that button so they won't be either using uh, keyboard and they won't be using mouse purely on the basis of speech based commands they will be interacting with the web page content so those come under motor and mobility uh, disabilities and cognitive it's it, it's quite a broad category uh, it it could be uh, reading disabilities learning disabilities intellectual disabilities and uh, difficulty in memorizing the uh, information and uh, difficulty in uh, understanding the contents the web page content if the web page content is written in complex language then a person with cognitive disability they will have difficulty in understanding the web page content because either they have difficulty in understanding those technical jargons or english may not be their primary language so cognitive so those people fall under the cognitive uh, disabilities and one thing i would like to highlight is that whether you are designing developing or testing so think and take into consideration all types of disabilities all types of disabilities this i will uh, help you make understand in the uh, uh, coming uh, session uh, okay and coming to our next slide it's web content accessibility guidelines so if you are developing a website 
or if you are testing a website so you need so you need to check uh, how much uh, does it conform to accessibility so that conformance check no the conformance check is fulfilled by wcag wcag web content accessibility guidelines so these wcag you know the wcag consists of uh, principles uh, guidelines and success criteria it is basically a standard specification document which helps explain how to make your web content accessible to people with disabilities it's a standards document and it contains a set of principles guidelines and success criteria and for all these success criteria you know these success criteria are divided into three conformance levels a double a and triple a so you might be wondering what is a double a and triple a see if you are developing designing or testing as per the conformance level a that means the, this is the least strict conformance level and if you are conforming to level a success criteria then uh, most of the basic features of the website are uh, you will be making the most of the basic features of the uh, website accessible and uh, if you do not conform to uh, a level a then that means uh, your web content will have serious accessibility issues that may prevent people from using it uh, nowadays and across the world uh, we have projects uh, in the scope no in the scope testing scope requirements and in the development scope requirements client is saying uh, the uh, web the web project it needs to be uh, compliant it needs to be wcag compliant up to conformance level double a so if you are developing designing or testing up to level double a that means you have to cover both a plus double a means you have to take into consideration success criteria of level a and double a and coming to level double a uh, if if you are conforming to level double a that means it, it is considered to be reasonably accessible for most users and most of the websites the all the websites in my opinion should aim for level double a compliance and uh, coming to the last triple a triple a is the most difficult one to uh, if you want to develop the website according to triple a conformance level this is the most difficult one because if if because not all the features of the website uh, you can make uh, you can uh, conform to level triple a i mean uh, you cannot make each and every feature of the website conform to triple a because this is the most strict one and it, it is the most optimally accessible one that means to conform to level triple a the your website should conform to every success criteria belonging under level a level double a and level triple a but uh, there are rare cases where client says you uh, you have to uh, conform up to level triple a it's a rare case okay so conformance to a standard means you either meet or satisfy the requirements requirement means here success criteria of these standards wcag standard level a is minimum conformance level double a is more accessible conformance and triple a is even more accessible the most optimally accessible one this one so here uh, this is a link uh, to a quick uh, guide to wcag i may share this in the google meet chat for your uh, reference And coming to the next slide, what to test? If you are given a website to test, then you must be thinking, what, what is my testing scope? What all uh, sections? Because the website is divided into landmarks, regions, and sections. What sections do I need to consider while testing? So whatever, wh whatever you see 
in the website no in the web document whatever content elements components whatever you see in the web, web document all the contents features functionality that are available to a sighted user or a non disabled user the same should also be available to people with disabilities when i say available it means it should be usable as well as accessible to people with disabilities if it is uh, fully conform uh, it, if it is fully conforming to a sighted non disabled user then the same should also be available to people with disabilities and we have to test everything available on the web mobile app or the digital documents like ppt pdf excel etc so the structure the structure that makes up the website needs to be tested what what i what i mean by structure it can be headings it can be landmarks it can be list it can be buttons radio buttons forms uh, anything and identify the scope of testing and plan your testing by dividing the web web app into pages uh, for example if i have this schneider electric website then you have to figure out uh, which section needs to be tested like this is the banner region okay now this region gets repeated within the same set of web pages like if i uh, expand this products and open the see all products link under new tab you can see the banner region no this is repeated across all the websites so this banner region no? this needs to be tested only once similar is the case with the footer region this is the content info landmark footer region which contains uh, logo social media links subscription to the email support services links and etc and this is you can see the ban uh, the footer region no this is also repeated so this needs so this needs to be tested only once the part of the web document that is dynamic and that changes according to the user interaction is the main region content apart from the banner region and the footer landmark the main region this content gets changed as per the user interaction for example this is the home page and this is the home page content as i click on all products see all products link here the main content gets changed to display all the products so what i mean to say is you have to test banner landmark only once footer landmark only once the main region which is dynamic in changes that needs to be tested okay uh, identify repetitive components means the banner and the footer landmark these these needs to be tested only once across the entire web coming to our next slide and how do we perform testing accessibility testing how do we perform it so you can test with assistive technologies assistive technologies are a broad category of technologies it can be keyboard alternative keyboard switch input device drag and speech recognition software uh, uh, it can be many things uh, under assistive technologies there are screen readers like jaws jaws this is a paid software nvda this is an open source free software voice over talkback jaws and nvda are uh, related to the windows platform you can use these two softwares in windows environment microsoft windows and voice over comes pre installed in the apple devices it can be ipad ios iphone and mac mac os talkback is a screen reader it comes pre installed uh, in the android in the android tablets and android phone so these uh, four are the major screen reader softwares in use as per the latest uh, statistics and uh, we can also use speech input devices like dragon speech recognition software uh, 
voice access, uh, voice input that are available on Android and uh, iOS devices. Dragon speech recognition software, it is uh, related to the uh, Windows platform. And you can also perform keyboard testing. Uh, keep your mouse away for some time and then you can test the website using only keyboard only keyboard if I say only keyboard that means you also you have to turn off the screen reader also means testing the website using only the keyboard without any assistive technology like JAWS NVIDIA like that so screen reader testing and keyboard testing these are different these are different in nature that I will cover cover in the upcoming and we can also perform other tests like color contrast testing high contrast testing keyboard only, like I said keyboard only without screen reader text spacing bookmarklet this uh, I will also cover and help you explain what is text spacing bookmarklet I will share this on the group Google Meet chat. Okay. Okay. And you can also perform browser zoom, two hundred percent, four hundred percent, and auto. You can also make use of automated browser extensions like DQs X, DQs X, uh, the Pesciello group, TPGI Arc. And uh, WebM, WebM's Wave. These all are browser extensions. These all are uh, is it blocked. These all are uh, browser extension tools, automation tools. Okay. So I've shared a couple of. Uh, Automated browser extension tools for your reference. Okay. So this is the HTML markup validator. This I will also explain at last. I will also share this. Okay, so coming to my last slide, it's uh, about screen reader shortcut commands. So before uh, coming to screen reader shortcut commands, I will cover uh, the uh, automated browser extension like DQX. Okay. Okay, so for example, I have opened this website now. So if I want to test test this website using automated browser extension tool like X from DQ okay so what I will do is I will right click and inspect here uh, in the uh, tool no in the uh, developer tools there is one tab named X dev tools I will simply click on this uh, tab X dev tools one thing uh, you we all have to keep in mind these browser automated browser extension tools no you don't have to fully rely on these tools to test your application why because uh, in the recent uh, statistics and survey uh, people have uh, conveyed that these tools no they only catch 40 to 60 percent of the issues 40 to 60 percent of the issues are caught by these browser extension tools they definitely help uh, th that's uh, there's no doubt but that's only 40 to 60 percent rest of the percentage it could be either uh, remaining 50 percent or it could be remaining 100 percent all of the uh, testing no that requires human human manual evaluation by human manual evalu evaluation what does that mean i need to test manually the whole website using screen reader jaws nvda voiceover talkback using screen reader and uh, i need to check uh, as a if i am a low vision user i need to check whether i am able to scale the website up to 200 percent 
by applying browser zoom. So I need to perform screen reader testing, browser zoom testing, 200%, 400%, text spacing, uh, color contrast testing, high contrast testing, uh, etc. These are these all come under ma human manual evaluation. Okay. So coming to X, okay, no, one more uh, tip. If you are a developer, whether you work in accessibility or not, if you are developing a website, so you can, uh, I mean, you can spend around half an hour to one hour. Uh, if you cannot perform basic accessibility test, that you can uh, make use of these automated tools just to see how much does your website that you develop conforms to WCAG. You can simply install this uh, uh, automated browser extension tool and you can simply run here just to see how much does your website conform if you are not able to perform basic accessibility test due to time constraint and all. So after clicking on X dev tool, I will simply click on scan all of my page button. So this will uh, scan the uh, DOM the DOM of the uh, entire web page and it, it, it showed me total issues are 280. Okay. So as you can see here, automatic issues it found was 280 and it needs review. When it says it needs review that are 206, that means these, this requires manual, human manual evaluation, 206 issues out of 280. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see here, uh, these are a list of violations that the X has encountered while it was uh, scanning and diagnosing this uh, web document. As you can see here, elements must only use allowed ARIA attributes. Certain ARIA roles must contain particular children. ID attribute value must be unique. IDs in ARIA and label must be unique. Element must have sufficient color contrast. Images must have all text. Links must have discern discernible text, recognizable. Discernible means recognizable, which can be programmatically determined and recognizable by screen readers so that it can be conveyed to blind users or visually impaired users. So these are the list of violations uh, that we have, uh, that the X has uh, encountered. So one thing you have to uh, keep in mind is that there might be some issues which which is also covered under screen reader. For example, okay, here it says images must have alternative alternative text. Okay, so I click on this violation and I click on highlight. It says here, okay, it says this graphic link, this is a link. Okay, my mouse pointer gets changed to a hand tool. This is a graphic link. It says this graphic link does not have an alt text. Okay, so what I will do is, you can also uh, uh, increase, I mean, update your accessibility knowledge by reading all these things. Like, it says impact is critical, okay, found automatically, okay, T issue tags, text alternative, uh, it comes under WCAG 2.1 level A, and it is failing 1.1.1 non-text content. And it's a failure of section 508. Okay. Now, issue description. It says, ensure IMG elements have alternative text or a role of none or presentation. Okay. It, uh, it also uh, showed us the element location where this issue is occurring. Element location, element source. To, and it, it also tells us how to solve this issue. It should have, it should have an alt attribute like this okay so i will cover all these things uh, this select element does not have an accessible name why because screen reader is only reading ima now uh, uh, we, we don't know what is ima there is no visual label if visual label cannot be provided just above this combo box then an accessible name using aria label should be provided so that is missing here. As you can see here, accessible name is missing here. They have used required attribute. 
ID, unique ID attribute, but accessible name is missing here. You can either provide an access, uh, sorry, explicit HTML label attribute, or you can uh, wrap it around the label tag, ARIA label, ARIA label by, and so on. Okay, so th uh, this is uh, the uh, automated, okay. Okay, so now coming to the next part, uh, it's screen reader shortcut commands. So you need to memorize screen reader shortcut commands for different components because there are many different components like landmark, region, button, radio button, checkbox, combo box, etc. So screen reader shortcut commands list. So uh, this is these are the list of desktop screen reader uh, keyboard shortcut commands. Uh, NVDA, JAWS, VoiceOver for Apple devices. For example, uh, uh, you can go through this uh, document no? to know what are the sh uh, keyboard shortcut commands. I will open up NVDA side by side. Okay, so here is the, this is the NVDA uh, screen reader, okay. So uh, to track the, to track what NVDA is speaking, it's a text to speech synthesizer. So to track that text to speech synthesizer, you can enable the NVDA speech viewer. You can simply press caps lock N if you are on laptop or insert N if you are on desktop device. If I press caps, caps lock N, you can move to preferences, then settings. For your uh, for your uh, easy view, uh, I will be uh, enabling the visual highlighting, just to help you show the current NVIDIA focus. So I will go to the vision and enable highlighting. Now, uh, NVIDIA, uh, you can easily see the NVIDIA uh, uh, using the red, using the red uh, focus indicator around that element, wherever that focus lands. Okay, so now uh, coming to the screen reader desktop shortcut commands. Uh, if you want to uh, close the jaws, no, if you want to close the jaws, you can simply press insert plus F4 command. Exit, jo ex exit jaws dialog will come. And if you want to Close NVDA, you can simply press insert Q or caps lock Q. Like if I press caps lock Q, it says exit NVDA. And uh, if I, uh, for example, if you are uh, running NVDA or JAWS, and if you want to stop the JAWS or NVDA speech for some time because you want to concentrate on some other thing, then you will simply press control key, CTRL, control key to stop reading from that moment. And it will it will not start reading unless and until you move your focus away from the current viewport, or if you uh, press uh, any keystroke. To in order to read the next item, no. To read the next item, you will press down arrow key. Like I will show you. Uh, here, uh, as you can see from the speech viewer here, my current focus is on link skip to content. If I press down arrow key. I want to move to the location combo box. It says menu item, sub menu, select your location. Yes, because here I press down arrow key. If I press down arrow key again, to move to the next element. Focus move to our buttons. If I press up arrow key, it will, it will bring my focus to the previous element. Up arrow key will bring my focus to the previous element, down arrow to the next element. Okay, if I use tab key, see the, uh, the the visually impaired users, no, those who use screen readers, the general keystroke to use the screen reader is arrow keystroke. Arrow key, uh, see, uh, to read a website, uh, people use arrow key. Arrow key focus will go to every element, 
that you are seeing right now it will go to the focusable components it will go to the plain text content i mean every every element uh, if you want to access every element then use arrow key if you want to uh, if you want to access only the focusable com components focus by focusable that means interactive components not the plain text contents the interactive components then you have to use tab key like if i use tab key uh, focus went to our branch if i use tab key again my points if i use arrow key then it will move to every plain text content uh, okay now uh, as you can see here there are many graphics as well as graphic links to quickly jump from one graphic to another there is one quick navigation key called g g for goa if i press g uh, focus went here if i press g again it will move to the next graphic or the graphic link see it skipped all these elements because these are not graphic their role graphic is not assigned it, it could be button it could be a high anchor tag and all but here it's an img uh, tag so focus uh, moved from this to this if I press G again, I think it will go here. See, it will went here. It it, uh, it went here. Okay. And if I want to move to the list items, list, then I will use L. It says no previous list. See, this learn how is tagged in a list. That's why my focus straight, uh, that's my focus uh, went straight to here. If I press L again, get started link see these social media links are tagged under a list of five items so l command is used to jump from list to list and i i command is used to jump from list item li li item like if i uh, simply press i see twitter link i i email link i i key print button these are all list items for L, it's list I for to access list items, G for graphics. Okay. And for U, U, U is for all the unvisited links, non visited links. If I press V, V, U and V are for the non visited links and the visited links. And if I press H key, H, uh, H, H key is used to jump from headings to headings from one heading level to another heading level if i press shift h quick links that means quick links is tagged in heading these are these all are tagged in headings h or shift h if you want to navigate to previous list previous graphic previous table or previous heading you can use shift h to navigate further use h If you want to uh, uh, activate any button, if you want to activate any component, you can press enter key or spacebar key. On button, either works. Spacebar and uh, enter key works. But on links, only enter key works. Spacebar won't work. And uh, OK, insert F6, landmarks. OK, landmarks. Uh, I don't think there are any tables in this page, but if you want to navigate uh, tables, press T command. And if you want to navigate inside the table cell, you should use Control Alt arrow key. Uh, Control Alt arrow key helps the user uh, to know which cell belongs under which row header or column header. Only if they are programmatically associated using scope attribute, ID attribute, header attributes. G and all you can uh, go through this uh, whole table okay one thing I will explain you if you want to know uh, this structure of the website no simply press insert sorry caps lock f7 see this brings up the NVDA elements list and there are five radio buttons links links means these all are the list of links present in this web document so you can either uh, select this link and move or you can activate it if you move if you select this no 
NVDA will bring your focus to this link. If you activate, means if you select this button, then NVDA will activate this button. So your this web uh, viewport will get closed, and the new web page with with the title this will open. These are the list of headings. Means uh, these all are headings that has been used, like Excel structure here, digital tools, partner professional. These are the list of headings. These are the list of form fields, like edit field. It could be button. It could be a combo box, check box, radio button, etc. These are the list of buttons. And these are the list of landmarks. See, it's it's important to uh, know what landmarks are. See, landmarks organize the web page into different sections. Uh, the landmarks help users to uh, to create a mental map in their mind about how the web structure looks like. Like I said at the starting banner, the starting uh, portion. No, this is the banner region. It 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 may contain a language change location combo box it could contain logo it could contain a navigation region and etc login register link these all come under banner region and under banner region you can see here banner is the parent landmark and menu navigation is the child landmark why because menu you no know, if i simply press enter see my focus went here means this is the navigation landmark. Navigation landmark is the list of links, products, solution. There are five list of links, and we have uh, named it as menu. You cannot uh, provide you cannot uh, provide an, a null accessible name to this because user will not know. Like if if I uh, do not provide accessible name menu to this navigation, and if screener only says navigation, and to here it will only say navigation, then how a user would know? We, uh, this navigation belongs to which part and this navigation belongs to which part both these are same type of landmarks this is also navigation this is also navigation in order to uniquely label these both these landmarks we have given them the accessible names as menu and additional links in footer now coming to the main landmark the main landmark is the uh, region where your primary content starts here from here your primary content uh, starts from here and complementary landmark uh, it, it's it's a separate landmark it's a landmark separate from the main landmark means it, it is just a supporting uh, content it uh, it is not related to the main region but it supports the main uh, document in some way and content info as we say uh, is the, it, it is the footer landmark see my focus went here this is the uh, content info footer landmark. Okay, now uh, okay. So okay, now we will uh, quickly. Uh, I will test a few things. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, okay. 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 If I press T Shift G, okay. my focus went here. As you can see, this is a Schneider Electric graphic link. If I if I click on this link, it will uh, navigate me back to the home page, which is the same web document. But as you can see here, NVIDIA said graphic visited link. That means graphic and link is its role. But it 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 but it did not say what is this graphic link all about. Its purpose is not clear because NVIDIA didn't read Schneider Electric with this. So let's inspect. Let's quickly inspect. As you can see here, they have used IMG tag. Okay, alt. See, this is the ampersand NBSP. They have not provided alt attribute to this graphic link. That's why NVDA simply read graphic visited link. It did not read Schneider Electric. And ampersand NBSP is the ASCII value for white space character. So what I will do is, I will simply edit as HTML. And I will write an appropriate uh, accessible name. So, see what you see visually as a sighted user that comes under the alt attribute. So, I will simply write S C H N E I D E R electric. Now, I have provided an alt attribute, meaningful alt attribute. Okay, now I will come back to this graphic. 
and let's see what NVIDIA reads. See, NVIDIA read visited link graphic. That's perfectly fine because that's its role. Now it read Schneider Electric. So I have provided here the alt attribute. That's why NVIDIA now reads its accessible name. The accessible name, no, it comes from the alt attribute. So now the purpose is clear to the user. Okay. Now, uh, now uh, uh, let's come to the next part. As you can see here, um, under the tab, no, see, under the tab, apps, analytics, and services, you can see these all are decorative graphics. I mean, these do not convey any meaningful information to the user. These are not informative by any means. Let's see what NVIDIA reads here. NVIDIA, what did NVIDIA read for this graphic? Graphic ampersand NBSP. If I press G, it, it, it also read graphic NBSG. See, graphic NBSB, graphic NBSB. So, alt. See, if you want to set an element, sorry, if you want to keep an image as decorative in nature, what you will do is, Never use ampersand as NBSP. It's a it's a white space ASCII value for white space. Instead, uh, where's the alt attribute? Okay. Yeah, I'm not able to locate the previous button. Uh, I lost uh, which graphic uh, was NVIDIA reading as ampersand NBSB. So, okay, no issue. Uh, for instance, uh, for this graphic, no, for this graphic, uh, this is a decorative graphic. Okay, I will explain you in the other uh, with this example. This is a dec decorative graphic, it is not mean, uh, conveying any meaningful information. In order to set this as decorative, you you will not leave the alt attribute as it is. You will have to provide a null value under double quotes. Like what I will do is uh, okay. Okay, I will simply. Uh, you 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 don't have to provide a white space here. You you can simply leave it like this. This becomes decorative uh, in nature. The empty alt attribute will make this image as decorative. So when this be uh, image becomes decorative, focus will not move to this graphic, and screen reader will simply skip it. And. Uh, Uh, if you want to, uh, for a good uh, alt text, no, for a good in, uh, informative image, okay. this is a this uh, image is very well explained. See the alt attribute, no, here it show it, it says a, a, an employee works near gas pipes at the gas compressor station means. Whatever you see in the uh, graphic, that you have to explain it here. You you don't have to go overboard on explaining the alt, on explaining the image. Uh, sufficient information is essential to help user 
understand uh, what is being conveyed in this image. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so now uh, let's move to the uh, other success criteria that is 131, 1.3.1 info and relationships. So under info and relationships, you see, you can see here, these are all links. This is a heading. Uh, info and relationship, what, what it says is all the information, the information that you see here, the relationships that you see here between this content and this link, and the structure. Structure means the semantics that convey meaning. If, if it is uh, visually presented to a non-disabled user, like uh, we as a sighted non-disabled user, we can see this is a heading. Why? Because it's it's bigger in font size. It is bold in uh, it's a bold in nature. So and uh, it is separating these two sections. So we can simply say this is a heading. But you have to. But in order to programmatically determine uh, this heading, you have to use appropriate heading tags. HTML heading tags h1 to h6 for example if I inspect this you can see here h2 tag is used here that means a structure a heading structure is provided to this element if h2 is not used here and if it is uh, visually presented using CSS properties then NVDA or any other screen reader will not read this as heading and my h key to jump from heading to heading will not work because semantics is not being conveyed here the structure is missing here so this is one uh, part which is important and uh, for the list no here it, it, this has been tagged in a list as you can see here unordered list here uh, a structure has been provided for all these five social media links so that's why nvda read list with five items like that and uh, and also, uh, if a data, if a data, no, if a data is organized into rows and columns, then you have to provide an appropriate table. You have to use table tags, table tags, TD tags, table data, TR tags, TH tags with head, uh, uh, header attributes, ID attributes, and so on, to uh, to uh, convey the semantics to the user. See if if any element is properly structured, no, then it is it can be programmatically determined. Like for example, uh, th this heading is properly structured using H2 tag. Now the screen readers, no, the screen readers scan the whole uh, dome. So it, it so it sees it it has been tagged under H2. That means this text can be programmatically determined from the dome. So the author or the developer has used H2 tag. So this heading semantics has been conveyed to the user. Means this this is programmatically determinable. Okay, and uh, okay. Uh, if there are complex table, no. If there are complex table, then uh, with nested tables and with row span, call span, then you avoid uh, using complex tables. Instead, break that complex table into simpler ones. So, uh, coming to my uh, next uh, uh, success criteria, that's 141, use of color. Okay. So, so use of color means color should not be used as the only means to, to convey information, action, response. For example, see, we as a cited disabled non-disabled uh, user uh, we all can make out that this is a link no how because it's light blue in color and it is uh, a different visual cue that is visual cue means a different light blue color has been assigned to this element also the mouse pointer gets changed to hand tool so we can uh, assume that this is a link but a colorblind user no who has difficulty in distinguishing between red green blue blue yellow they will have a hard time in knowing whether this is a link or not so what is the solution for this 
provide underline underline for all the links present in the page always give an underline under this link because if you provide underline here no then see i will show you one simulation colorblind simulation if i am uh, using protanopia or echometrosivia so here uh, this is quite light in color and this is quite dark in color i mean user uh, should not rely on color alone to identify that this is a link instead of using color alone provide an underline underneath this link text so this will help user to quickly identify that this is a link they will not have to rely on color alone so this is a bad example actually and uh, one more ndtv i will show you okay and one more thing one more thing i will show you underline is required under this link okay and if i bring keyboard focus here see uh, and if i uh, or if i uh, use a mouse hover on mouse hover event you know there is no change in the visual queue only light blue appears means uh, the default light blue appears there is no underline appearing on mouse hover on keyboard focus or there is no change in the background content so this is even more inaccessible okay so let's move further and as you can see here this is one ndtv website okay this is the price performance uh, chart okay as you can see here color coding color coding has been used see color code has been used to differentiate different categories like for light green for all the companies that have been highlighted in light green color it's 5% and above for little for a little dark green it's 2% to 5% like see for the color blind users no they will have they will face difficulty in recognizing all these three i mean the luminosity and the brightness among these three shades of green it's almost similar especially the first two so they will not be able to distinguish which company has 5% and above price and 2% to 5%. So I will uh, uh, show you simulation here. Okay. You can see here almost this, you know, this color and this color appears the same. Though in reality, they are completely different. This is the negative rating and this is the positive rating. And if I use this uh, colorblind condition, this and this remains the same. So this is a huge uh, barrier. See, now these two are uh, appearing as same. These are the different colorblind uh, conditions of the eyes. So what? So what is the fix for this uh, for this issue? So instead of uh, relying on the color changes, no. Provide different. Uh, shapes like for negative five percent and above provide a square shape instead uh, you can either provide shapes and that shapes will be reflected here or you can simply uh, use different design patterns uh, for design patterns i will show you here you can use different design patterns like this could be a solid filled circle this could be a, a, a circle with horizontal lines, slanted lines, crossed lines, uh, uh, different shapes like that. So user will not have to rely on these colors. On the basis of shapes, they can differentiate all these uh, companies. Like here, for example, as you can see here, this is a uh, this is this will work. Why? Because the color contrast ratio, the brightness, and the luminosity ratio, no. This is quite vast. I mean, the difference is quite huge against white and black. So this is differentiable. However, this is not differentiable because red, green, blue. This is a colorblind issue. Uh, users uh, face difficulty in, in distinguishing between these three colors. In grayscale, no? like I showed you here, in grayscale. Grayscale means echometropia. In grayscale mode, a user who is having this condition, he will uh, he will be viewing the chart like this. So all three remain the same colors. So they will not know which which one is the Windows, Linux, Macintosh. 
So in order to differentiate this, you can either uh, use this one or this one. Like I said, different design patterns like horizontal lines, dotted lines, like this. So user has uh, does not have to rely on color. As per the shape design pattern, they will know. Okay, uh, closely uh, located dotted means it's Macintosh line here, and also additional labels have all also provided here. So this is a uh, good example, and one more good example I will show you here. In my in one of the projects, I showed the client the visible spectrum one here. Uh, uh, how did we make this accessible? So this is a WebGuard, WebGuard uh, spectrum. So I suggested the client to use the V, V word for violet, P, B, G, Y, O, R, with their spectrum wavelength values. So this is perfectly accessible because user will not uh, be able to differentiate between blue, green, yellow. These all will look the same for them. So by providing additional labels, just adjacent to this, uh, it's it, it's accessible. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's come to the next success criteria, and that's uh, label in name. See, you have to understand the difference between accessible name and the label. Okay, for example, uh, let's talk about. Uh, hmm, button okay let's talk about uh, carousel okay learn how see this is the anchor tag he's used here with href attribute containing the link and here the link text no the link text is learn more link text is sorry learn how so this is the label of the component label is the name means label is the string value which users can see on screen on screen okay now what is accessible name accessible name can be different from the visible label like for example uh, i will show you an example uh, learn how is the visible label the link text and if I uh, override this uh, link text with uh, with accessible name, like if I provide an accessible name like learn how eco structure, like if I provide an ARIA name here, ARIA label, if I uh, provide an ARIA label attribute here with the string value as learn how eco structure, so screen reader will read this as learn how eco structure. It will not read learn how. That is presented visually so this is the difference between the visible label as well as the accessible name so if I uh, if, if the accessible if you provide accessible name as read how for example read how here so uh, visually it is present as learn how but accessible name it is read how so accessible name is hidden is hidden from the visual users it will not be available on screen so uh, what what you hear from screen reader, the text to speech synthesizer, no? what you hear from the screen reader speech, all screen readers read the accessible names. They never read the visual label. So, so you should be mindful of uh, whatever accessible names you set here. It should be meaningful and it should match with the visual label because there are many cited screen reader users and if they encounter learn how link and and visually it is present as learn how, but screen reader is reading it, is screen, screen reader is reading it as read how. Then they will get confused because visually label is learn how, but hidden the access, hidden accessible name is read as read how. So uh, this might uh, cause a confusion to the user. Okay, now uh, uh, coming to the uh, next uh, success criteria that is 1.4.5 images of text okay so let me show you one bad example okay. this uh, image no oh sorry okay. 
this is the one whole image this is not a text means i can see i cannot text i cannot select here either using my keyboard i can i can't even perform caveat browsing using keyboard i can't even uh, use the mouse so th what is this this is an image of text this is one whole image the text has been embedded into this image if i simply right click and see the alt text you can see it's a big failure why alt text is given as infographic student experience underscore 2022.jpg this is actually the file name that has been set for this image as you can see the alt text is incorrect insufficient not at all descriptive and on top of that this has been used as one whole image so the uh, success criteria images of text it conveys that instead of using images of text use plain text plain text because the plain text no these can easily be uh, manipulated by the user i mean user can easily change this uh, font size you can easy uh, user can change the font size of this text they can change the foreground and background color of this text using high contrast mode and user can easily uh, text spacing see if i click on text spacing see there has been uh, uh, spacing between the letters between the words and between the paragraphs and between the lines also but this but no effect took place here why this because this is an image so avoid using images of text especially images containing these huge amount of text so what's the solution for this thing so what uh, we can do is we can simply pull out all these text uh, in a separate document and we can tag this how the experience works the, uh, see oh, as you can see here this is one whole image what we can do is we can take out this heading and tag it at appropriate heading level hierarchy it could be h3 h4 depending on the preceding heading level so we will set this using html heading type for this no for these you can either set this as an image or you can also take this out and put it in a list tag the first list item it it, it can be or you can also set this as headings registration process will if, if, if this is h3 th these are all are h4 and under this h4 heading this is the small section under this h4 heading like this so h3 h4 and this could be h3 and you can tag all the all of these in a list tag all of these in a list tag and you can hide all these decorative images using alt is equal to double quote and this could be tagged in a heading and this could be tagged in a list so by this way using native semantic html tags you can make this accessible instead of and if you uh, use headings and plain now this image has been converted to the plain text content now with the plain text content i can use 200 percent zoom 400 percent zoom i can increase the text size i can i, I can change the foreground background color etc so this is the limitation so uh, so content on hover or focus no this is also a very important guideline uh, uh, especially focused on mobile and uh, mouse users okay so content on hover or focus see uh, this success criteria says that suppose this is a component okay trigger is a component if i bring mouse pointer to this component then additional content has been triggered okay and if i bring keyboard focus here only keyboard focus remember i am not activating it using enter or spacebar key i am simply bringing the mouse pointer or i am simply focusing on this element as i focus on this element the additional content appears see so what this guideline says is if additional content appears on keyboard focus or on mouse hover then I, I should be able to dismiss this additional content using escape key. I mean, uh, this additional pop-up has appeared. Okay, so I should be I as a user should be able to use my mouse and uh, and read this additional content as long as I want. It should not automatically collapse. 
this should not automatically disappear unless and until I press escape key. See, my mouse mouse pointer is inside this additional content, and and it stays it stays still unless and until I press escape key. After I finished all these three lines, I will press enter key without moving my mouse away from this pop up. I, I will press escape key. See, as soon as I press escape key, the additional content disappeared. This is the dismissible property. And hoverable property, the hoverable property says that if I'm bringing my mouse pointer here, so I can hover over this entire content. Uh, see, uh, there are many people with learning disabilities and reading disabilities. They have difficulty in keeping track of the lines of text that they are currently reading. So what they do is they use they make use of mouse mouse pointer to help them highlight the text and keep track of the current text that they are reading. For example, and this additional text gives additional text on the trigger term. So uh, hoverable means I, I, I am able to hover over this entire content and I can uh, make a track of what I am reading. So it should not get disappeared, means I can easily hover over this without uh, getting disappeared. There should not be any JavaScript timing event where after 20 seconds it, it gets automatically disappeared. That should be removed. Uh, uh, let's give the control to the user. And the last is the persistent property. The persistent property is uh, I want this additional content to remain visible unless and until I don't remove my keyboard focus away. Like if I press tab, it will get collapsed. See, if I bring my mouse pointer away, it will appear, it will, it will disappear. So this will, uh, this should stay persistent unless and until I move my focus away. And uh, remember, uh, this success criteria, no, 1.4.13 content on hover. This is not applicable to the title attributes used on buttons. The title attributes, the HTML title attributes uh, used on the on any component, because it is controlled by the browser uh, user agent, and it is not modified by the author or the developer. Here, this additional content, this tooltip is modified by the author. So this, we can make it accessible. OK. OK. So let's move to the next uh, uh, success criteria. That's 1.3.2, meaningful sequence. A meaningful sequence says that uh, I am able to uh, navigate the web page sequentially means the navigation order, no, the reading navigation order of the web page should be logical and meaningful. Like the uh, everything that is uh, visually presented on screen, the same way the reading order should be set. Uh, it should not be like uh, after my products, my focus goes to the search edit field, then after search edit field, it navigates back to my documents. This reading order is not at all logical. Uh, this might be due to the uh, underlying DOM order, no? the source code order. It, it might be different from the visual uh, presentation. Or the search uh, edit field has been uh, positioned using CSS. Uh, so, like, for example, uh, if I'm, uh, I will only uh, show you the banner region. Okay. Now it says skip to main content, my first element. Now it says USA, our burns. Okay. Okay. The, here, the reading order, no, as you can see here also, it is perfectly logical. It's perfect here. So uh, the meaningful, uh, the reading order should be meaningful in a meaningful sequence. That's what this guideline says. And when you test this success criteria, make use of arrow keys. Now coming to my uh, coming to the next success criteria, that's uh, that's post stop hide. Okay. See, as you can see here, this no, this is the moving content. 
this is an automatically moving content as well as this is a blinking content. See, the color contrast ratio is failing. Avoid using uh, moving content or blinking content because see, users of uh, I'm, I'm uh, even I'm facing difficulty in reading all of this content. Why? Because this is con con continuously moving, and I'm I'm facing difficulty in reading the running text. So the other issue with the LIC uh, is that they have provided the play button, pause button. Means if I pause this, then uh, this will get paused. However, if you see the, if you inspect the code, no, it's it's totally inaccessible. See, if I simply use, I'll, I'll show you. See, uh, when I uh, inspected this button, no pause button, you can see accessible name is missing, role, generic role is given. I Either they have used pen tag or dip tag. See, and it is it shows keyboard focusable as NA. Means it is not at all keyboard focusable. Means my uh, screen reader focus does not move to these buttons. And it is also not focusable by tab key. So this is an inaccessible example that I have found here. And coming to this, no, the carousel. See, avoid using carousels. Carousels should not be used. It poses a lot of challenges to low vision users, to cognitive users, to screen reader users also, and to non-disabled users also. Here they have provided a pause button, but this is also not functional. Uh, avoid using carousels. And you can see here, you might be wondering these all are text, plain text content that I can be seen. No, these are all images, images of text. See, this is one whole image, images of text. This is a wrong, I mean, inaccessible example. And you can see the alt text of this graphic. It says to pen card. If I inspect the alt text of this graphic, it's LIC Jeevan Saksha 980 by 9. See, inappropriate alt text is given. Inappropriate alt text. Actually, image of, images of text should not be used here. And carousel should not be used here. So I will, I will leave you a link here on why on, on why we should avoid uh, carousels. Uh, so coming to my uh, next uh, success criteria, that's 1.3.3, sensory characteristics. So sensory characteristics say that uh, any instruction, see, if you, if you are, uh, for example, I'm not able to locate that example. Uh, so I will uh, explain you. Uh, for example, if there is an instruction here, for example, that says uh, activate pay direct button, or if some, uh, for example, if there is an instruction here, for example, it says activate click here button, uh, orange in color, that is orange in color, or activate pay direct without login button, which is situated in the middle of the page. These instructions are, uh, uh, are wrong. Or if you can see, uh, appropriate, uh, activate submit button. If there is a form section, for example, it says activate green colored button to submit the form. Now, how would a user know, a visually impaired user, how would they know where is the, what is the green colored button? Uh, what is that green colored button? So in that case, this success criteria conveys that the instructions that we that you provide either for understanding the content or to operate the content it should not rely on sensory characteristics like color like activate uh, green colored button it should not rely on color it should not rely on shape like click on the rectangle shaped button no and it should not rely on size on the visual location like click on the button situated at top right corner or bottom right corner to submit the form. Visual location, should, uh, these sensory characteristics should not be used. If you if you really want to use that sensory characteristics, then include the label of the button. For example, uh, activate green colored label. Earlier the instruction was activate green colored button to submit the form. 
if you uh, in my opinion you should remove that sensory detail if you cannot uh, remove that sensory detail then you should modify this instruction like activate green color button labeled submit form to submit the form like that okay and uh, the page title no the page title should be meaningful the page title can be here if i simply hover over this it says life insurance corporation of india home hyphen home means this is a home page okay so how you can see the you can either test it according to to the tab by hovering over the tab or you can press the command insert t to know the page title or you can simply inspect it and under the head body sorry head uh, head tag there is the title tag here this is the page title page title should be meaningful and it should describe means it should describe uh, what content is present uh, on the page for example it, if it says know your life insurance so here it says uh, here it got converted to know your life insurance page so lic of india this is the company name followed by the page name that means user will now know that okay i am on know about your life insurance page page and this is and meaningful page title is helpful if multiple tabs are opened and if user is switching between multiple tabs so when you switch between multiple tabs no from here to here to here then page title is read out from the title tab so this should be meaningful okay so okay now i will show you one example of uh, language of page okay language of page okay. uh okay. Uh, for language of page, uh, for every web document that you view on the internet, they are written in some language. No, it, it could be either English, Hindi, Marathi, uh, French, something like that. So uh, currently this page, no, this page is written in English language. So how you can figure out whether appropriate lang attribute has been used or not. So you can inspect it. Lang attribute is a lang attribute is a global attribute, which is means global attribute means it can be used on any HTML element. So here, lang is equal to en means en English. So HTML lang is equal to en. So this is a good example because this page is written in English language. So here the primary language, no, the primary language of the web document has been set here. So this basically helps the user agent. This helps the browser as well as the assistive technologies, uh, so that they can they can, they will pick this information lang attribute and they will render the page more accurately. And screen readers can use the correct pronunciation rules. For example, if it is set as en, then screen reader will use the English pronunciation rules. The uh, text to speech synthesizer will make use of the English pronunciation rules and it will read the content according to English language like that and I will show you one bad example in the LIC itself for example if I change the language to Hindi see you can see here the entire web page has been changed to Hindi language there is no English see so let's inspect this again okay see the uh, lang attribute no it has not been changed it is still set as en rather it should be set as hindi not hindi the short form of hindi i will have to look up which uh, which uh, language uh, unicode should be used here so it should not be en here so what problem uh, you, uh, blind users will face is the screen reader will uh, not be able to appropriately read all these contents in the hindi pronunciation rules this is a major barrier and I, I will show you one more uh, classic example okay see one good example i will show you here okay. this is schneider electric website okay if i select uh, france okay france so the entire web, website no now it 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 it, it gets changed to 
French language. Now let me inspect it. Okay, everything you can see here, it has been changed to French. As you can see here, HTML lang attribute C F R F R. See. Earlier it was EN, now it has been set to FR. FR means FR for French. Capital FR uh, might be the sub region Unicode language here. So, this is the good example. And uh, I will show you one, one more example that's related to language of parts. See, uh, you have encountered many websites where majority of the language is written in english but there are few passage or few phrases where a different language is written for example here it's espanol it's written in spanish language here this link is written in french so the entire document is in english but this passage no it's different it's written in different language and it also the browser the chrome browser has rendered this text appropriately in uh, Spanish and uh, French uh, rule. So if I simply inspect, no, if I inspect this, if I inspect this uh, link, Espanol, you can see hyperlink, anchor tag is used here with lang is equal to ES, means Espanol for Spanish. So benefit, uh, browser has properly rendered this link to the user. Also, screen reader will make use of this lang attribute and it will change its pronunciation rules and it will convey this uh, link in the form of, uh, it will read this link in the form of Spanish language. So a, a person who uh, whose uh, primary language uh, is Spanish, he will be able to better uh, understand if it is uh, read out in Spanish pronunciation rules. Similarly, lang attribute is a global attribute which has been set on the anchor tab. Similarly, for French, it has been set as FR. So this is a very good example that I have found. Okay, now coming to uh, coming to the name uh, name role value uh, success criteria. Uh, the name role value says that uh, the accessible name of any component the role the role of the component as well as any properties that have been set by the user or the state like checked state uh, selected state expanded state collapsed state toggle state paste not paste etc these can be programmatically determined by the assistive technology so that it can be conveyed to user for example if i am on products page for example see it says product sub menu one of five. That means it's a menu. It's a uh, sub menu. It's uh, products is the accessible name. Sub menu is the role, and one of five is the listing. If I if I uh, press right arrow, it shows uh, sub menu two of five. If I press down arrow, then this link got expanded. But here expanded state was not read. Why? Because uh, a sub menu has been used. And if I am uh, using a submenu role, then after expanding, my focus straight away went to the see all solutions link. So here, expanded state. If if it if it does not read expanded state, then that will work. So, if there is an expandable collapsible button, for example, then screen reader should read the button label, the, its accessible name, its role, its current state. If it is collapsed, it should read collapsed. And as soon as user presses enter key, it gets expanded. So the change of state, no, the expanded, it should also be read out to the user. So this is all about the name role value. And uh, and, uh, and uh, coming to the next success criteria, that's status messages. Uh, okay, I think only 24 minutes are left, no? So, okay. So one, I will do one thing. I will uh, cover other tests like color contrast testing and more. Okay. Okay. So uh, color contrast testing. No, color contrast testing is to calculate 
the color contrast ratio of the elements of the text uh, what it does is uh, this is the cca tool that i have downloaded so in order to test the color contrast ratio of this button i will simply using the dropper tool using the dropper button i will select its foreground color which is pure white triple f triple, sorry this is the foreground color and i, I will uh, uh, select the background color which is light blue as you can see here the color contrast ratio is 2.2 is to 1 which is less than 4.5 is to 1 so this is a ratio so this is a failure on on all accounts so this is basically a color contrast ratio failure color contrast ratio is that the color contrast ratio of the text no between the foreground color and the background color it should be at least 4.5 is to 1 okay this is for the small text category small text means if it is less than 18 point or if it is less than 14 point bold if there is a large text for example this might be a large text if i want to test the color contrast issue of this heading then i will simply pick the foreground color and set the background color as white it says 2.1 now this is a failure so this is the color contrast ratio testing and uh, coming to the non text contrast no so non text contrast uh, uh, for example all the non text elements no apart from the usual text like see this expandable collapsible menu button the up arrow down arrow okay the placeholder okay place or no uh, the close icon the close icon the checked state of the checkbox the selected state of the checkbox the default state of the checkbox the default state of the radio buttons etc or all these uh, we have to test the color contrast issue of all these non text elements so for example uh, I... okay okay if i want to test the uh, uh, color contrast issue of this radio button so i think it's light gray it will if it will definitely fail definitely fail against pure white it's it's it should be at least three is to one it, it's a failure and and uh, the color contrast ratio, you know on mouse hover it becomes green then also it, it's a failure and if i select it then also it's a failure see it's green it's failure means the default state on mouse hover state on keyboard focus state on check state on unchecked state we should test the color contrast issue of all the non-text components uh, that is uh, important that conveys some information to the user so non-text contrast testing is this and uh, coming to the uh, resize text no see resize text there's a long standing debate that is still ongoing among the accessibility consultants about how to test resize text 1.4.4 see resize text is uh, the, the all the text that you see here the text or the text based controls means the button labels like the link text the button labels etc these can be resized up to 200 percent of its original size without using an assistive technology like zoom text or a windows magnifier like that I mean the content, no, the text and the text-based controls. These can be scaled up to 200%, twice the height and width of the content. So when you scale the content, no, uh, there should not be any overlapping of the uh, contents. There should not be any truncation. The text should not get cut off. For example, if I simply, okay, if I simply. Uh, uh, I have increased the uh, I have applied browser zoom up to 200 percent now the all of the content has been scaled here so there should not be any content getting cut off or overlapping among the div containers and all so there are uh, four types of tests in this you can either set the zoom level to 100 percent and you can 
change the display window size to 1280 pixels and then uh, you can uh, test Hello. Can anybody hear anything? Uh, no, I think yeah. uh, we lost Bhupesh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes, I you think, are. Uh, yes, so I think we can wait for two to three yeah. minutes. Yes, because I have pinged Bhupesh. So. Hi, Shweta. Hi, Yeah, I mean, can we wind up this call and uh, rejoin once we Yeah, I think uh, I'll just stop the recording.